So there is an objective to the game of football. In your case, you've got a double-pronged objective. You've got to go there and win by scoring more than you're allowing the back into your own net. Life is exactly the same. This rat race that I talked about is exactly the same. You go into sales, you go into marketing, you go into medicine, you are preventing something bad from happening, while at the same time you are trying to make something good. You don't put a patient in hospital as a doctor. You don't put a patient in hospital and say, okay, you came in sick, let's get you back to zero. You want to make them better. You don't want to make them worse, which is conceding the goal at the back, but you want to make them better, which is scoring the goal. If it's in sales, for example, if you're working in sales as a young sales executive, you want to make sure that you don't deplete the resources of your company unnecessarily by going on mad, wild chases around as a salesman looking for something that you're not lost and going through expenses upon expenses, selling stuff. You want to actually sell. You don't also want to just sit down in one spot. So the ball keeps moving and that's your ball. Your ball is your sales target. Breaching that sales target is scoring the goal. Spending too much money on unnecessary frivolities as a salesperson is conceding goals because you run at a deficit. So the football game, once you kind of come to understand that the mentality of the footballer is exactly the same as the mentality of everybody across the world, whatever it is you are doing, then you are on one good step towards becoming a success in yourself. All right. Uh... <laughs> Okay, Mr. Today, I can see a lot of value in what you are saying, and I don't know how much um, we're going to be able to take from it because it's really highly, highly important. Um, I am not a, a, a football expert, but I look at it like a game. The other day, I was interviewing a historian of Jamaica origin in the UK. We were looking at African history and the relationship between African history and the European history, and of course, by extension, Western history. And uh, at a point, uh, the historian was telling me that this is a game. Whether we are dying, whether we are at war, whether we are at peace, whether we are talking about economy, it's always a game. And if it is a game, we need to know the rules of the game. Because there is no way you can win in a game if you don't know the rules. So anyway, that is just a digression. Now, you talk about something very important now when you were explaining the rules of this game and also how it applies in our lives. Do the players understand these rules? I mean, I'm not talking of, okay, you foul, they give you a yellow card, they give you a red card, but the ulterior psychological effect or the implication of the game you are playing. Do we explain this to the African players, for example? No, we're not doing enough of it at the moment. We are too driven by the finances, the money side of things that we don't even care whether they understand the rules or not. You know, when I say we, I'm not one of them. But then, unfortunately, I belong in an industry where I am in the minority. So I'll have to say, yes, we. There is a lot of apathy, there's a lot of negativity around the game of football at the moment because we are not imparting the right kind. Our players have been made to understand that it's only about money. And that that in itself is really bad. There are rules. The rules, the rule, the rules of playing the game as, you know, don't foul, don't go offside, it's gone to throw in, it's gone to corner kicks, is one. But that makes only 25% of the player. As a coach, when you're getting into coaching, when you get into coaching and you want to talk about um, uh, the, the coaching talent identification, scouting and talent identification of coaches, um, you know, of the youth in your neighborhood, they tell you, that 25% of it 
is the skill set. That he can play ball, he can dribble, he can put the ball between the legs and go colo and all that. It's only, I, I would say, 25%. The rest, you've got to have the physical ability. You now have to have the 50%, as far as I'm concerned, is mental. Mental on the pitch, mental off the pitch. Let's assume that we, you are on the bench and you, 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 you come in on the, in the 60th minute for the final 30 minutes. What impact are you going to make on the rest of the team when you get in there? Don't just go in there. They've brought you in for a purpose. The purpose is for you to change something, either to consolidate a lead that you have or to go and equalize. But you go there and you still start dancing around and you dribble everybody. And you dribble everybody, including yourself. You're not doing yourself any favors. You're not doing your team any favors. So at the end of the day, that third part is the influence and impact that you have as a player in the team. That's very important. People don't see it. They say, ah, but we bought a player, he's 100 million. He should be able to be scoring goals. If he is not having the right impact in the team, then he's not your player. So that's another one. Then the fourth quarter, the fourth 25% is your impact outside the field. You're a player. You don't have the ball at your feet. You're not on the pitch. But who are you as a person? Who are you as a person? Do we teach that? No, we focus on that 25%. And that is why in Africa, that is why we haven't gone to the next level yet. Because on the football scene, for example, we have, fit, we have developed to at the point where we can the skill set of the player, but we haven't developed the other aspects of their mental lives. All right. I'm going to spend some time here because it is very important for me. Um, I'm not looking at it only as a, a game of football. I'm looking at it as a game of life. Um, okay, now, the game I was referring to before with, um, with Selena Carty, that is the, the historian I was talking to in UK, uh, was actually the game of chess. And the game of chess is very important. In fact, uh, she, she was suggesting, no, another person was suggesting that we should introduce our children to the game of chess early. Because there is a lot that is actually going on in there. Um, now, okay, let's look at it this way. Is it possible that we could take the rules of the game of football, for example, and introduce it in our politics? In that because we are talking of value here, we are talking about role model, we are talking about team playing. We are not talking about just being able to dribble, but we are also talking about within your dribbling, within your holding the ball, how does it relate to the next person? How does that relate to the other person? Then that is the opponent. How does it relate to the entire objective of the 11 people that are in the field? in relation to the other level people that are going to play. Because if it is only 11 people, all of you that are playing, it is not the game. Because you cannot play against yourself. You are playing against another person. But in what, what is the parameters? So I'm trying to understand because it, it, it might look to be very simple, but I think it is complex. Can we transfer that value into the politics, for example, into our life? outside the football game, if we understand it. Football is a game of life. I always say it. Football, if you, if you actually excel in football, you will excel in anything. But I have not seen that person yet. Football is a game of life. If you look at it, you've said it all. Teamwork, team playing, very important. In our politics at the moment, it's about me, me, I, I, I did. My administration will do this. My person will do that. But it is teamwork. It's not only the 11 players that actually make the team. There's the coaches, there's the assistant coaches and everybody. But there's also the bench. You see that bench of reserves 
when we were growing up, we would say, oh, he's on the bench. He's not good enough because he was not good enough to start the game. But he is, he, the, these people on the bench also have a part to play in the development of the team.